Hi everybody and welcome to this video series where I'm going to show you the basics and the parsing capabilities of different CAD tools and translation management systems. This will help you get started on the technical side of things. The first tool that we're going to see is MemoQ. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with MemoQ. And the first thing that we're going to learn with this tool is how to check the parsers or the filter configurations for this tool. So we can go to MemoQ and then under Resources, Resource Console. If we click on Filter Configurations, this is going to be the place where we can check or even create or customize any parsers or any filters. These are only the default ones because if we click on Create New or Filter, if we open this drop down list, we can see a bunch of other filters that we can create from scratch or even customize them. So this is basically the place where we're going to create new filters depending on the file format that we work with. The file that we're going to check right now is an XML file, which is this one. So we're going to actually create a new parser or a new filter for XML. We can click on create new again. We can give it a name, so ENG for engineering and then XML. And for this filter drop down list, we're going to specify XML filter. We don't actually need to give it a description, so we can leave it empty. We can click on OK. And now we're going to see the ENG XML filter in this list. And actually on the right hand side here for the filter column, we can see it's an XML filter. So we can right click on this filter and go to edit. And this is the place where we're going to customize or modify the settings for this filter or this parser. The first tab that we're going to see is encoding and reference files. This is only the default encoding. So by default, we're going to always use Unicode UTF-8. That's just the standard. And here for this section, reference files and DTD, we can basically add a file. We're going to specify our XML file and it's going to be added here. We're going to use this later on in the process. Now for the general tab, these are just some settings and we're not going to go through all of them, but basically keep in mind that by default, it writes BOM, so the byte order mark to Unicode encoded files on export. We're going to disable this option because otherwise, if you translate, for example, from English into German and you to use a source file, which is UTF-8 without BOM, when you translate and export that file, the target file is going to add a BOM, okay? And when we deliver the files to the customer, ideally, we would need to deliver the same encoding as the source, okay? So we're going to disable this option. If we go to tags and attributes, this is the place where we're going to work the most. So we have different sections here, handle tags and tag attributes. The first thing that we're going to do is to click on populate and the populate option is going to work depending on the file or files that we have added here, okay? So we added the parsing.xml file. So if we go to tags and attributes here, we're going to see all of the elements for this XML file. If we go to Notepad++, plus plus, we're going to see that we have the node, to, from, heading, meta, and body elements. So these are basically the elements that we can see here by default. Now, it's only a matter of checking if some elements are going to be translatable or not. So we can check this in Notepad++. Plus plus. All right, so for example, the first one, which is to, and the second one, which is from. Here, if you are familiar with embedded content, you will notice that we have some placeholders, all right? So these placeholders are not going to be translated, but this does not mean that the to or the from elements are going to be untranslatable or non-translatable at all. Because for example, in this XML file, we can have a placeholder which occupies the full string for the to and the from elements, but in some other file, we could have some strings for translation. OK, so the placeholders or the embedded content as such is going to be protected separately. However, here we have an element which is meta and here we have some code. And because of the name of this element, which is meta, we will know that for these kind of XML files, if we have this element, this is not going to be translatable. 
So something that we can do is to go to meta here. We can select this element and enable the not translated settings, all right? You will see here an NT, which is non, not translated or non translatable. And this is not going to be added for translation anymore. Now, this is just a small XML file. And these are the basic settings that we can play around. So if we go to entities, for example, here we have some options for entities and then subtitles, which in this case it's an XML. So we're not going to use any subtitles. But basically the core of the functionality for the XML filter is going to be found here. If we have any element, for example, like meta, which is not going to be translatable, we can use this option. And even down here, we can see a preview. So for example, if we click on meta, we're going to see the content. And if we go to node, this is the root element. So node here is the main element. This is called the root element in XML. And we're going to see the full file, all right? We're going to see the same that we can see in Node++. Now, again, if you are familiar with embedded content, you will notice that we have here some placeholders. So for example, a student name, instructor name, course title, a student name down here. We even have, and let me actually show it here in Node++, which is bigger. We even have the backslash N, which is the code for a new line that's not going to be modified during the translation. And here we have another placeholder. All of this embedded content is not going to be translatable, all right? But the non-translatable or the embedded content as such is not going to be protected under the filter settings, okay? This is why we're not going to modify or add any rules to protect those placeholders. For now, we're going to say that the meta element is not translatable. And we can click on OK. And this is just the filter that we have created for XML. Now, you might be wondering, all right, but how can we protect the embedded content for this XML? And that's a good question because it's the next thing that we're going to learn. With MemoQ, that's called a regex tagger. So what we can do is to create a new regex tagger, which is going to be used for the embedded content of the files. For example, we can click on create new and we're going to call it eng regex tagger. And for filter, we're going to specify regex tagger, which is here, so regex tagger. We don't need to add a description again, and we can click on OK. All right, so we're going to see, because this is ordered alphabetically, so all of them are going to start off with ENG. We will see them all together. This is the XML filter that we created before, and this is the ENG regex tagger. And on the right-hand side, you can see regex tagger that we're going to use for the embedded content. So we can right click and click on edit. And as you will notice, these are just different settings than before because it's a regex tagger. So what we are going to do basically is that we're going to check the file in Notepad++ and we're going to use regular expressions in order to protect all of the embedded content. You will notice here that the pattern is the same for most of them. So we have the opening curly bracket, the closing curly bracket, and then inside we can have some letters, some underscores, more letters, the same here, or course title the same, student name the same, or we could even have digits, okay, or numbers. So we're going to protect that with regular expressions. Now, first off, the tag type is going to be empty because it's a placeholder, it's a unique placeholder. If we have something like an opening tag and the closing tag, we could use open and close, but this is an empty tag. So here we're going to add the regular expression and basically we're going to use curly brackets, which are going to be taken as literal characters. And inside we can use a shorthand character class, which is the backslash W and this encapsulates any letter, any digit or any underscore. And we can use a quantifier, which is the plus symbol. And this means one or more times of the preceding character. So in the end, what this is doing is that it's capturing between curly brackets, it's capturing any digit, any letter or any underscore one or more times. Okay. And we can actually click on required because we would need this placeholder to be required for the translation. All right. So imagine that we are translating from English into German. 
we protect this placeholder and we want to force the translator to keep this placeholder in the translation. That's why it's going to be required. And we can click on add directly and we will see it it's right here. Okay. So as you will notice, we have here the dollar symbol and then a zero, which is the display text. And that's because if we copy all of the text and put it here, so for the input text here, we're going to see how the regex tagger is going to treat all of these placeholders. All right. So what we have here, and we don't have actually the line breaks when we copy and paste, but you will notice it here. When we have student name, for example, it's going to be modified internally into a tag. So it's going to protect the student name, the instructor name, the course title, the student name, and the zero. You will see also the forward slash and then the closing or the greater than character. And that's because it's going to be protected as a tag internally. Now, what we also need to add is the new line. So as you can see here, we had the backslash and then an N, and that's going to be protected as well because we don't want the translators to modify that by mistake. So what we can do is basically to add a new one. So we can say backslash N, but the thing is that the backslash with regular expressions is a special character. So we need to escape it. And the way that we escape it is with a backslash. Okay, so that's why we need two backslashes and then the N. We're going to see required as well with empty. And now we click on add. If we click on change, what we're going to do is to modify the selected one. So make sure that you click on add. If you are also doing this on your side, click on add and you will see now the backslash here and the previous regular expression here. All right. So what we're going to also see is that the result is going to protect the backslash. So we have the backslash N and then it's going to be protected into a self-closing tag. All right, so this is the only embedded content that we have in this file. We have protected all of the embedded content and we can click on OK. And you will notice that we now have the Eng XML filter and then the regex tagger for engineering. The next thing that we're going to do with Nemocube is to create a cascading filter. And a cascading filter is basically a filter that is going to use two filters, two different filters or even more that we have created previously. This is very important and very useful when we have an XML filter or any other kind of filter, for example, for JSON, if you are working with JSON. And then we also want to incorporate the regex tagger in order to protect the embedded content. Okay, so we're going to click on create new cascading filter. That's why it's called cascading. And let's call it, for example, Eng XML with regex tag. The description is going to be empty, although you could use this description field for any description that you want to add. And here you will notice that we have first filter, first filter configuration, second filter and second filter configuration. We're going to do the following. So for the first filter, we're going to specify the type of filter that we are going to work with is an XML filter because the XML filter is the type of filter. And then for first filter configuration, we're going to see here a bunch of filters. Most of them are the default ones with MemoQ, but we have the Eng XML, which is the one that we created before. Okay, that's the customized Eng XML filter that we created previously. And now for the second filter in this cascading filter, we're going to use the regex tagger. So again, we can select regex tagger. And for the second filter as such, it's going to be basically the type of filter on the right hand side. This is just the regex tagger. And for the second filter configuration, we're going to specify end regex tagger because that's the one that we customized ourselves. We can click on this end regex tagger and click on OK. Now you will notice that we have, okay, we have the end XML, which is an XML filter. We have the end regex tagger, which is the regex tagger. And lastly, we have the Eng XML with regex tagger, which is a cascading filter. Okay, that's what we have done. We, got, we have created the XML filter. We have created the regex tagger for the embedded content. And then we have created the cascading filter 
for the project that we are going to create now. So let's go ahead. Let's click on close and let's go to MemoQ and we're going to create a new project for this file. So we can click on create a new project without a template. So we don't actually need any template. And this is the window that we're going to see. Here, we're going to call it my project, for example. We're going to give it the source language and the target language. In my case, I'm going to say English United States into Spanish from Spain. All of the fields can be left empty. Okay, we don't actually need this for the test. And now the project directory shows the default directory. However, we can actually change this directory. And let me actually put this same directory in here and select folder. You will notice that now we have this directory and the name for the project is going to be added into a new folder. Okay, that's going to be created automatically. And the same, so created by, created at, deadline, etc. We're not going to use those settings. We can click on next and you will see here that we have the translation documents. This is the place where we're going to add the XML. We're going to use import with options. And now we can select the file, which is parsing.xml. And this is a new window for document import options. You will notice here that for this XML, we have the default XML filter. But what we are going to do is basically to click here. Right, so, or even here. Yeah, so this is one XML files and this is the parsing. Okay, that's why we have two rows here. We can select here and we're not going to use the default XML parser. What we're going to do is to use our cascading filter, which is again using the XML parser that we customized and the regex tagger. So we can click on end XML with regex tagger. Actually click this again. Okay, this is it. And now we make sure that when we process this XML file, we're going to use this cascading filter. We're going to click on OK. It's going to be added here. And now we can click on Next. This is the place where we would add the translation memories. We don't have any for this example. So we can click on Next. The term base is the same. We could add any term base to the project. And we can click on Finish. Now this is the project that we created. So this is the parsing.xml. And we're going to double click on this file in order to see it on the, in the editor. All right, and you will notice here that we have the first translation unit with student name, and this is completely protected. This has been protected with the regex tagger. The same happens for the instructor name placeholder and any other placeholder that we have, including the backslash n for the new line and even the number of weeks here that we have for this placeholder. All right, so that's all for this first part of MOQ. I hope you have learned some new stuff. And for the second part, what you are going to see is how you can create a new parser for text files, actually for any kind of text file, no matter the structure. And we're going to see how we can use regular expressions in order to add that file and extract the strings for translation. So that's all. I hope to see you in the next video.